Hello, big dreamers. Your lady, Vitamin Katie, is here. And I'm so beyond excited. I have my special, incredible client, Denise. Denise, I am so inspired by you. And I know a lot of people are really inspired by you. We started working together in July of 2019. And it's January 2020 now. And I know you've overcame a lot of hurdles working with me. I actually pulled up our notes when we first started working together. And it was like, so interesting to hear how you really weren't making your health a priority at all and it was something that was really really frustrating you and I also loved about you that you were like I'm not a rule follower like I was right. you know like you were just like I really want to be able to feel free and feel high vibe and make the environment a better place and like you were really frustrated with yourself but I'm I'd love to hear from you we started working in July um and at that point when I did reach out to you, well, we I know you from um, the Shift Retreat. And so I had started to follow you and started thinking about like my health and fitness and just like weight loss and just really thinking about where I wanted to go with that, but really just didn't have any like, I've done every yo-yo diet ever known. I've done everything. I've struggled with it all. Um, and inadvertently weight always just seems to come back on because like, you can't, it doesn't sustain. Those things just don't sustain. So I thought, well, I'm going to reach out and see how that works. Let's, let's reach out to Katie. Um, and, um, I would, yeah, in the beginning I was like completely like still resistant, <laughs> still resistant to the change, but wanting to, um, be more mindful about the food consumption that I eat and what, you know, the planet and just kind of doing my part. Um, so I gave up um, meat at, in July when I started to work with you and I gave up cheese and started that plant-based um, eating. Um, and it, it, it was a struggle initially. Um, like I was, I have told Katie this before is that when we started to work together, I really struggle to get on board. And I think that is what we've talked about is that when you start program, you're either really like gung ho and you start it and you're really like regimented or you're like me who really fights it, doesn't really want to do it, has a million excuses. I'm like, it's my birthday in August. It's the summer. Everyone has a party in the summer. How do I manage? Um, so I really was slow, slow moving into that. and. Um, and what never, what, what ended up happening was I was doing well. I wasn't really, well, 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 the whole thing about you, which is what I love, is that it's not about weight loss. It's really about health. And it was really getting into my health. So I, I actually do connect to spirit guides. And I do um, have a couple friends um, in LA that I work with that um, work around spirit. And actually, and I'm not sure I told you this, is that the last like year, it's always been about my health, which is weird. So they're like, you need to get your health in check. And I'm like, I'm like in my early forties, like, I think I'm fine. And they're like, it, spirit is saying, get your health in check. Um, and I didn't really, I knew what that meant, but I didn't really know how to go about it. And that's what kind of really led me to you. Um, and when we started working, you were like, drink water, do this. But again, it was really slow moving. I am an anti-rule follower. It's really hard for me to get connected quickly. Um, I'm just not like super, like I'm just not a very like routine follower. Like I don't regiment that way. I don't like to vibe that way. And, and so then I inadvertently go into like the opposite of what I'm supposed to do. Um, and what I want to like impart here and tell you, Katie, is that what never had you never gave up on me like you ne you always inspired me to continue to go you never were punitive you never were you never like engage in any kind of negative um serious like talk about where i'm at and what i need to do which i've expressed to you in the past was that i was always when i would get trainers or i would start a program inadvertently if i wasn't following the plan exactly I was told I was a fa I was failing. Um, I needed to get my ass together, like get my priorities in check, and you know all of those things, which would inadvertently piss me off. And then I'd say "fuck you," and then I quit. And then I would stop, and like it was super not. It was counterproductive to my growth. Like I needed a different kind of support, 
which you provided to me. Mm -hmm. um, so it's taken me from July to about December to really like get it and really like start it and really like really put it into action. I was putting it into action in the past, but not where I needed it to be. And then um, when you and I discuss kind of like the vision, you want to go over like how you like try to rein me back in? <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. Oh God, it's so awesome hearing you speak like this because I just want to say, I'm sure so many people relate to this idea of like, can we just be feminine and in the flow and like not be super regimented all the time? Like, I love that about you. And I'm sure a lot of people relate to this idea of like, oh my gosh, it's not okay to feel like you're a failure and to feel like you just start forcing yourself to do things. And it's just, it's not a good spiral. And yeah, talking about the vision, something that I really work on with my clients is instead of it being from this place of I have to do this, and this is just like a struggle. It's really about being inspired to create what you want to create with your life and having some sort of a practice. It doesn't have to take too long. It can take 30 seconds. It can take five minutes, 10 minutes to think about how it is that you want your life to look. And I love that you've been really taking that practice and running with it. I think that- I think that's where the shift was, was that, um so like what I do for the community, I'm in, I, I do, I'm in social work. So like my whole life is of service to others. And, um, and then I like am PTA mom and I have my work, social work, where I work with abused kids and then I'm on public arts commission. So I do a lot for service to humanity in the world, but I really wasn't leaving anything for myself. Like I wasn't doing a lot of self care for myself or, you know, being of service to myself. Um, and like on the outward, people are like, you're a badass, you know your stuff, like you're committed. But what was, what was the missing link was this internal self-talk privately that obviously you only talk to yourself and these words that you say to yourself um, that I wasn't worthy of weight loss. I wasn't worthy of like good health and eating, that I was a failure in that regard. Like and I would think about how I was so successful in so many areas of my life, but not in that realm. And I had like ultimately just given up. Like I was like, I am not worth it. Like I, I'm why I'm like, you know, just that self-talk, like you're, you're stupid. Something's wrong with you. You can't get it together in this realm. I'm badass everywhere else and I can, I feel it. But there was that one piece that I would just do this negative, negative self-talk. And you were, when we did those, what's the vision to success or what's the vision that you're going to do? Um, we really like honed in there. Like really, this is what I do say to myself. And that was like a pivotal moment of an aha. Oh, wow. I'm really sabotaging my success by what I say to myself privately. Like just that I don't even articulate it. It's just what I'm saying in my mind to myself. Um, which was a really huge shift and um the when we talked about like visualization and the art of visualization like that's a game changer like i can't believe we don't talk about it enough i can't believe that i'm just finding this or i may have heard it in the past but never like funneled it in this way to just myself but the self-talk about how I'm worthy and how badass I really am. Like what I say to myself, like when I look at myself every morning in the mirror, I look, regardless if my hair is out to here, I have makeup down my face, whatever that is. Um, I'm like, you are worth it. You're amazing. You're a goddess. Like you can do it. And I literally look in the mirror and I say that to myself because I'm like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not getting any younger. So it's like, you're gonna, we're gonna get older and we're gonna age, but it's about my health that's gonna keep, sustain me. Um, and so like, I'm like, you're amazing. You're amazing, you're a light, you're a gift, you can do that. And when we talk about like the art and mastery of visualization that your brain does find ways to, to uh, find evidence to su support that. And if I'm always, when in the past, when I was always saying like, you're not successful, you're never gonna lose weight, you're, whatever you're never going to drink water because i used to only really drink about less than eight ounces of water a day and then like 
pretty much sustain it with wine when I got home and couldn't understand the correlation of dehydration and all those things, which were catching up to me. Um, that, that, that my brain was finding evidence of that I wouldn't be able to be successful. And I mean, I, it's, it's just a game changer, that, that visualization that we worked on, um, because not only is that for my own health, but it's also started in other arenas of my life, my work life. I visualize every time I'm gonna go into a meeting, I testify in criminal court, I visualize prior to going in there, and I go against like the toughest defense attorneys, which are, you know, I don't hear great things about, but I visualize something different and my, my energy and my brain finds evidence to support it and it happens. It really works, it really works. Um, you know, it's like, I can't tell anyone enough like that, is what you need to do in order to change your life because then you're you're actually going your brain is going to find evidence to make those things happen for you. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And then we also talked about this, which I think is really key, is this positive reinforcement that you do. And when we were talking about this positive reinforcement, I in turn wanted to share, right, the art mastery of visualization to others particularly my children who are 15 and 12, who, you know, they're not vibing at this frequency. <laughs> like, and um, they're gonna have to have their own growth in their own time. And hopefully the little seeds that you plant are gonna be there. You know, they listen, they hear it, but you know, they think a little bit like, what, you're, you're, you're a little out there. So, um, but what I wanted to do was I wanted to really tell them about it. And like, oh, you need to do this and you need, Blah, blah, blah. And then I stopped and I realized, but Katie doesn't do that to me. And that's what, that was success. She never said, you need to do this or listen up and get this or wh whatever that was. Um, so why am I doing that to my kids? Right. And I realized it was like, whoa, an aha moment of success is really about that positive as human beings we need the positive reinforcement and just dropping seeds and what you were doing for me in july to now was continually dropping the seeds to get me to the place where then i bloomed mm -hmm. and then be like oh i started this program and now i'm amazing right i started this program and a month later i've lost immediately results you know because that's not reality that's such a farce that's being sold to us um, in consumerism and in the in like the healthcare industry or health weight loss industry like I still see it to this day I just saw something on Instagram some sponsored thing about instant results and I'm like bullshit nothing is instant right mm -hmm. um, so I just um I just think you're a magical person and you're such a beaming ray of light that the, that never were like you never once were like, um, you're not doing what you need to do. And, and I think that that inadvertently got me to where I'm at today. And I'm still working on it and I'm still growing and I don't think that's ever gonna end. There is no, there is no finish line. Mm -hmm. like health and well-being, there is no finish line. It's just, it's just fact that you just have to do this every day in your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God, I'm so lit up by you. It's really, really beautiful to hear everything that you're saying. And I do remember some really powerful calls with you where I feel like we don't see the water we're swimming in when it comes to our negative self-talk. And it was really cool to get to call you out a little bit and be like, wait, you're actually doing a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're actually, yeah, and, and providing you that um, that mirror to let you know that our words are really, really powerful and to create and to beat ourselves up. And I remember some really, really transformative calls with you that allowed you to shift a lot, little by little. That's so awesome. And I love that you said that now you're drinking water. And honestly, yeah, your oh. skin looks amazing. Look at my skin. You look I also amazing. started your skin. I, I started your skin regimen too. Nice. The Bogavia. Bogavia, yeah. But yeah. besides that, I mean, like, let's just talk about for a second. Besides the water, um, what was your routine like when it comes to your self-care prior to working with me? Like oh my gosh. <laughs> um, let's see. I worked until like seven or eight o'clock at night. Um, I can work forever. I'm, my kids, um, so when my kids, my daughter was like talking to her friends about like their parents and they kind of like coin each parent. 
I won't say what she, they were saying about the other parents, but me in particular, they call, my daughter said, well, she's a workaholic, right? So um, I was like, oh, I am a workaholic. So working a lot, not ever exercising, like zero. I mean, I may take my dogs for a walk in the morning and for about like 45 minutes, I was doing that. Remember, I was kind of starting that. So I was taking the dogs for a walk, but prior to that, I wasn't doing much except maybe taking my dogs for a walk. Um, drinking, I mean, zero water. I mean, zero water consumption. If it was like maybe in lemonade, there was water in lemonade or water in soup. Um, but and I would only get to a place where I, when I was really, really dehydrated, where I start pounding water because I started to feel sick. Um, and then, you know, like I would just work so much that I would forget to drink water. I would forget to eat. I was running to every fast food restaurant, you know, and, and not like bad fast food, like Panera or Chipotle or whatever. Um, and then like coming home and drinking wine. And I wouldn't really drink that much. I'd maybe drink two glasses of wine, have whatever dinner and call it a day. I, I had no regimen. There was none. I didn't have any like specific thing. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the, the good and bad about being a, a hell raising non-conformist is that you don't <laughs> conform to anything and then you don't, right? <laughs> I, I want to feel like I've conformed to anything now. Like I don't yeah. feel like I've done anything completely different except like I'm honoring the love in myself I'm honoring who I am I'm honoring what I look like in this moment I'm not honoring what I'm going to look like in seven months now I'm just honoring what I look like now and if you don't vibe at this or vibe at what I look like or you don't vibe my body type then fuck off like really it doesn't matter to me because yeah. I have to love myself in the way that I was created right so um it's, it's just been such a shift. I mean, I drink probably 64 ounces of water now a day, which I'm, if I can do it, anyone can do it. <laughs> no, because I couldn't do it. Um, I didn't like drinking water. Um, and so I like found ways to like always have, um, you know, my, my, my drink with me, I left it in the car cause I went hiking and then, um, and I put doTERRA lemon in it, which really like resonated. I like the way that tastes. Um, and then like, I, and I would go to sleep every night, not washing my face. I would pretty much pass out, fall asleep, um, and not wash my face. I wasn't being consistent to that regimen. I wasn't really consistent to anything, you know, and I'm super grateful, um, with the way I drink water now, I actually don't even really drink wine anymore. Like it's, mm. it's something I even crave or want. Like sometimes I'm like, Oh, I'll have a glass of wine. But very rarely do I drink more than one anymore. Like, yeah. it's, I think because I'm so well hydrated, I don't, it's not a, it's not like, a, it's not like I'm like wanting it. It's not quenching my thirst. Right. So there's so many. Like things. now. What? Like, so now we have that, this crazy picture of you like, <laughs> oh, like working so, so, so hard, not even drinking any water. But yeah, now I feel like it's been quite a, amazing yeah shift like how much energy you have how vibrant you are how you just said that you like you were hiking and you're hiking now so what's that look like for you now oh my god I love hiking you know it hiking is easy because you don't have to really do anything you just go outside and start walking up a mountain um so and there typically is mountains around us right we, we're in California so we um so I have a mountain behind me that I just get up go walking and um today I went walking in Palm Springs um I go to Palm Desert so I have a bunch of like four or five hiking trails that I like to do and they're not easy and they're free though they're also free and they're open anytime right so there's not that whole thing um so I can go early in the morning I can go in the I can go whenever so I've been hiking every day I started dancing you've inspired me to dance I used to love to dance like I love to dance um, and I lost that. I lost that part of myself. I lost that, um, like that whole spirit of dancing. I felt like I wasn't, I didn't feel good in my body. You know, I didn't feel like, Ew, I just, it just wasn't connected. And now I'm dancing all the time. I'm dancing, like, even when I get home after I've worked a little bit and I've hiked and I've come home and I've still danced a little bit 
just because it lifts spirit, it lifts your spirit up. So dancing, hiking, and then on the days that I can't hike, um, I walk. I'll just walk around my work, I'll walk um, in the grocery store, I'll walk in Target, I'll just do as much walking that I can. And then I found a buddy. Like I actually have a, my 12 year old daughter hikes with me now and she didn't know she liked hiking and she loves it. So she hikes, she's a dancer, so she's like super great shape. So she, she inspires me to walk. And then I have another friend who's 15 and a half and she's really into hiking and she wants a hiking partner. So we're like the perfect match because I can pick her up, we go hiking, we hike at night, we hike during the day, we hike all the time and she's down every day. You know, um, so it's like I have this, it's not like another friend who has all these responsibilities that they have to do. She's like a teenager. She's like, oh, I, so I thought like, she's my perfect match. We're, our per we're like perfect together. Um, <laughs> so we hike as much as we can together. And our goal now is that to hike every trail in our valley. Um, and then our goal is to hike the tram, which is um, an extent, it's like a six hour hike, um, the end of the year. Woo! So, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm pretty like, what did we, did I commit to that? But <laughs> I'm going to try. Oh, um, God. You know, and that's just done wonders. So it's not like I had, to, I didn't want to go back into the, um, I didn't want to go back into like a traditional class or um, I just wanted to go really slow with that walking and just hiking. And um, I was just in Pasadena. So it was in June or July, right when I first started working with you, I went to Pasadena with my kids and we walked this, um, we parked and then we walked this like strip. And I remember dying, dying to get, I was like, why did we park so far? Oh my God. Like I couldn't even breathe. I just like was my stamina wasn't there for like for that. And then I went last weekend um, and we did the same walk that I just, I didn't even conscious, I wasn't conscious of it. But we parked at the same place and we walked in Pasadena. And I realized when we got there, this is the same walk that was nothing to me. It was like a breeze, a breeze getting there and a breeze getting back. And I've only been doing that like wholeheartedly for maybe what, almost a month? Mm -hmm. wow. yeah, it's changed that significant. So um, I really like, I'm really looking forward to kind of just continuing that momentum. Today we ran a little parts of that hike. Wow. There's inspiration. Let's run. I was like, sure, let's run. I was dying. I was <laughs> dying, but I thought, you know what? I only have to run 15 seconds. I'm not going to die, right? So I ran, and then I'd stop, and then I'd run, and then I'd stop. Um, so we're, like, progressively getting our goal. You know, they, they keep me on my toes, get, my, get, me, get me going. So I'm, you know, I'm really excited to see what six months looks like for my health. Yes. My health. I'm not even looking at my weight loss. Like, I don't care. It will happen. Amen. Yes. You were a perfect example of that. Just how the weight loss is like, okay, cool. It's a great side effect, but I'm going to focus on energy. I'm going to focus on my stamina. I'm going to focus on high vibe and dancing and having fun in this life and having that vision, feeling your best. God, Denise, you are such an inspiration. It's well, we talk about like, um, I've been talking about this for a while about like my energy, my frequency, and like vibing at a different, you know, frequency for myself and other people around me. Like, you know, I used to waste my time with, um, you know, talking to people that, about things that didn't serve our higher good. Uh, gossiping or you know, chatting about things that were irrelevant like what somebody was wearing or whatever um and I really um you know that was kind of the space that I was in in terms of like being a mom and mom groups and things like that and um I realized that um stepping away from that like and really evaluating what frequency I wanted to be at was um also like in my mindset and like being intentional but also it's like high vibrational food, right? So it's yes. like high vibrational food, high vib vibrational mindset, um, all of that, you know, interconnects. And, you know, sometimes that's a lonely place to be when everyone wants to go out drinking and just, I mean, that's what I used to do. Every, my mom group friends was just a bunch of drinkers and we would drink and drink and drink and drink. Um, and um, it's, 
shifts and the people that are meant to be in your life stay in your life and then the people that aren't you know you wish them well you give them love from afar it's there's like no hard feelings but like i want to vibe at a different frequency and if you're going to do that you have to like wholeheartedly embrace it on all levels yeah thank you for saying that that's actually a really really big hurdle for people is like recognizing their relationships and not wanting to lose ties with people for sure Mm -hmm. but i think you've been doing a really incredible job of balancing that you know and letting that be okay i think okay for our life and our vision our high vibe amazing vision and yeah I just want to say when Denise says high five high vibe it's really like you know when you step into a room you can feel people's energy right so like Denise and I feel like everybody has this vision like when we have that intention of how we want to be seen when we step into a room we don't want to just be like this low vibrational like you know to ourselves it's nice when we lift people up and I know that's what you're all about so Mm -hmm. um, But yeah, I digress. I just wanted to say that you do a really, really great job of lifting up that vibration and mingling with that vibration. And you're like, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, like it's not the end of the world and how you're really gentle with yourself. And um, yeah, and you have a really steady mindset around that. You know, and I, I just turned 46 in August and like part of what I've been seeing and I've talked to you about is that, um, I see all these beautiful girls that come onto your page and, you know, they just are lights. You could just see, they're just, you know, I see beautiful bodies. I, they're vibrant. They're youthful. They have all these things. And, and I hear the negative self-talk they say to themselves. And I'm like, whoa, like that is so, I, do you not see what I see? Do you not see how amazing you are? Um, you have nothing to change in your physical appearance. But so many people are still seeking out um, the 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 uh, mindset, the mindset of like changing that m- negative self talk for women is really key because we're told if we don't look a certain way, we're not a certain height, we're not a certain weight, that you know there's something wrong with us and we need to fix that, right? So I see yeah. so many, like beautiful young women like saying I need to fix myself when in essence that is who they are. They're uniquely themselves and whatever society has created as one ideal it's just not ideal it's not it's not realistic you know so it's it's more about changing here and then everything else falls into place yes yeah when we change our mindset thank you for pointing that out because I know that yeah I have a lot of women who follow me and who reach out to me who of course they're so incredible but they don't see it yeah Yeah, they don't see it. And it's really tough to have that conversation because it's true, like that you really have to shift for yourself and it can take time um, to really believe that you are worthy, you are amazing, you know, and to stop comparing yourself to others. It's so, um, yeah, it's so- It took me five months working with you to change that mindset. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That just didn't happen. It took a long time and I saw for a, a whole, a whole minute and then it just, it just shifted. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. I thank you. So you're not just like, oh, plant-based work. It's really this mind shift change, um, exercise of like having clarity, vision, like a mantra for yourself. Um, that really, um, I, that's what I value about working with you as well. Mm, thank you so much, Denise. You're, you're like really, really, you've come so far and it's been so fun to get to help and to get to know you, and it's just been such a dream. Is there anything else that you want to add? I love your stories. You're really good at describing. No, I'm thinking. Um, no, I mean, what, what also, like, just to, like, to kind of bring it back, when people are like, well, I want, like, I did this to you for a minute, I was like, I want a meal plan, <laughs> right? Tell mm-hmm what to eat i don't know what to eat right i i think that was like i was still like struggling and you gave it to me and i was like oh really it's just like that easy i looked at it it was nothing like what we're t- we're like program like keto high protein like you know that kind of diets um and i looked at it and i was like oh a bean and rice with salsa and avocado burrito well okay <laughs> hummus and carrots okay like what you just gave to me was 
more than just a meal plan. It was like a, an awakening here of it's okay to just eat food, <laughs> right? And it didn't have to be regimented. It didn't have to be like so many of this, so many of that. Um, make sure you have so much of this. I mean, I feel amazing not eating cheese. Like, I feel amazing. And there's so many alternatives to that. Like, um, you know, I'm, I'm Mexican. So in our family, it's like a lot of cheese and it's a lot of meat. It's a lot of all this stuff. So I never really like loved meat. Um, I would eat it here and there, like carne asada and stuff. But um, I would thought I was going to really struggle not giving up cheese because I, at some point in my life, I had given up meat, but I had completely replaced it with cheese. And I had cheese like all day long. Um, so like, and now that I don't have it, I thought I was really going to miss it. And I don't miss it, you know, because there's so many alternatives that you, at first you're like, this is just like, I can't eat this cheese. Right. And then you decide you can, and then you taste it. And then you have, there's different alternatives like at Trader Joe's and that I was like, this is good. I just had a quesadilla. Like this just tasted just like it. And I put salsa in it and avocado really doesn't taste any different. <laughs> so, uh, I really like value that you taught me that it's not just about this, like, Oh, you need a specific meal plan. It needs to be this way. And this, this is how much you need to eat or don't eat and carbs and not carbs. It's just like, just eat for living, just eat for living and, and make sure that it's, you know, high vibrational kind of as best that you can, you yeah. know, and occasionally tortilla, obviously I'm going to. And so I just make sure that I don't have cheese and meat in it and that I have one and then I, you know, couple it up with something different in the day and yeah. eat a lot of um, fruit and vegetables. It's Amen. not that hard, but it's, it is <laughs> <laughs> hard when you're used to eating or traditionally brought up a different way of eating, you know? Totally. Yeah. So thank thank you. you for sharing that. No, that's a really good yeah. point. A lot of people have been like super low carb, super restrictive, and it's really scary to have this freedom. So that's really cool that you found that and you found freedom and just being more at peace. And, and yeah, it's not just about like, I know that you feel so much better not eating cheese, of course, but also that environmental impact. People don't realize they think that vegetarian is the way but the dairy industry for sure too with the environment is like you're it's huge so i just got my kids not eat, um, getting off eggs i kind of like broke it down what it was and they were like Ugh. so <laughs> they're like i'm not eating that anymore either you know um so that's good i was going to tell you something but i forgot what it was so um we you and i can go on for days yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i love it for days. oh i know what i was going to tell you um i've tried every everything i've tried everything i've tried it though i've tried shots that i used to give to myself hcg shots i've tried fen fen when i was way younger probably in my mid-20s and when it was legal right when they gave that to you they like, don't give it to you now <laughs> illegal and bad for you and all these bad things happen to people um and like the atkins the mediterranean the everything weight watchers and nothing makes me feel as alive as healthy as whole as as plant-based and just committed to health when we when we shifted from when you said to me okay well this isn't a weight loss program denise this is healthy eating this is like changing your health this is working on that that i realized oh it really is about my health and my guides were saying that to me all along like work on your health, work on your health. And then the, the weight is, is just an afterthought. It'll happen when you're committed to, to really taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the game changer. Like you, Amen. At it, you can't look at it any other way, except um, like, how are you going to, you know, uh, contribute to your own health and your own self care? Yeah. And just as kind of that secondary process to it. Totally. That stuff works. And believe me, I still get like, ooh, what is that? What's this new thing? What's this or what's that? And I, and I stop myself from even looking at it because um, it's just what we've been programmed like as consumers to look at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard to put in a picture what the transformation that I want to provide to people, you know? I feel like yeah. it's marketing that it's really amazing to get to hear your story because it's true. Like having the before and after pictures are like 
oh my god like that's what people want to see so it's so in, it's yeah. yeah but I feel you and I really really appreciate you sharing your story and I Thank also just you. wanted to say you know I do have women who they really want to get strong and a lot of people who um they yeah they just don't know how to eat plant-based that also have a lot of success um tracking and meeting their needs and stuff I really do personalize my approach depending on what people like are really needing and what pe it lights people up so I'm really really glad that you found this freedom and balance and like it just it's so inspiring I and can't I wait for like another six months just to see like how it is how we're growing what's the next thing what's the evolution in the next process god but, yeah you're gonna be like running up that mountain <laughs> i know i'm gonna be like look at me video that right yeah. i'm now right now like i'm huffing and puffing don't video that <laughs> yeah. i should do i should do the huff puff and then the running up later on but yeah. i mean i can't wait i'm super excited it's super doable um it's just committing to yourself yeah and, Literally, when I'm hiking up the mountain, I'm like, what's my vision? What's my vision? <laughs> I do that really like hard incline. I'm like, the vision, 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 health, health, vision. And I just repeat the mantra as I go up the mountain to get me over the portal versus telling myself, you know, I can't do it. Oh my God, this is so hard. I'm going to die and blah, blah, blah. I take that all out and I just go to the vision and I just talk to myself up the mountain all the way up going you can do this it's possible you're whole you're healthy you're happy you're connected you can do it and i get myself up the mountain Woo! Yeah. that's the, that's the key with the shimmy and a shake yeah. and no I, even, I even do it when i'm parking now like i'm like oh i really need parking parking's gonna happen right now and i i shit you not this guy pulls out and he's I'm, oh my god I don't even tell my kids anymore because they're like, okay, but I'm like, manifesting queen. Like, what? I'm like, no, I swear I just said that. And they go, sure, sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they will get it when we're just planting those seeds. <laughs> yes, they will get it. They will get it. I know. I feel like this is this is science though. This visualization science. stuff that I'm talking about, it there really is science behind this at this point. So it's not even like woo woo or anything. No. Visualization is is huge. Like every so huge person has intention and vision behind what they're creating. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. really not um anything that needs to be like all spiritual in that box. Right. Whatever. No, it's very scientific proven. I mean, I live in the spiritual realm, but this is also based in science, which I remind my naysayers that it is based in science. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, I love it. I know we could go on forever, but I do yeah, have one final you. question for you, right. Denise. How do you feed your power? How do you empower yourself on the daily? Well, I told you. I wake up in the morning i literally look in the mirror and i say you're a badass you can do this you're happy you're whole you're a goddess like i'm a goddess i know what i can do i know i'm here i know my purpose um and i just find ways every day to kind of um lift myself up internally like in the car i say things to myself about like how amazing you are how gifted you are what your purpose is like what your purpose is like a divine purpose to help kids in the universe to speak mm -hmm. their universal truth about things that have happened to them like i continually feed that if i didn't and i was a negative nelly and i couldn't i wouldn't do, be able to do what i do right mm -hmm. um, i would be I, I listen to people's most intimate or like they're really like intimate <clears throat> darkness of what has occurred to them in like an abusive situation and so people ask me all the time they go how do you how do you how are you like this when you hear that all day and i just know that it's my it's like serving my like it it's what's serving the greater good but it serves me to be like this complete warrior about what i do and the warrior needs to talk to herself to get herself to that place to help other people i wouldn't be able to do that if i was always like looking to the past or looking to what if or i don't speculate i don't like to assume those things are not good for anyone i tell people who start speculating like that's not based in fact or reality you are speculating 
You don't even know that's going to occur. So I never do that. I never speculate. I don't like to assume. And if I do, my kids even now go, you were just speculating. And I go, okay. And I re like reframe the thought. Um, so I don't, I don't do that so that I can harness the goodness or what I need to do in order to like get out there and live the best life that I can or be of service to others or, you know, do that badass self kind of stuff. Ooh, yeah. That's so <laughs> cool. I love how like, yeah, you definitely talked a lot of empowering practices that you have, but that last thing you shared about you remembering, like thinking about your purpose and how you impact the people. And that really and like, if you have a passion, you need to go follow the passion. I happen to be in my passion and I fell into my passion early in my twenties, my mid twenties. Um, and I love children. I love talking to them. I absolutely adore little kids. I love teenagers. Um, and I just, when I'm around them, they actually ignite like uh, the power in me to be of service and like just connecting humanistically like that's what I always try to do as a professional is connect on a human level not in any title that I hold um and um just be of service that way and, and it, I mean, that's it that's all you need to do it's all you need to do is to like look at positively can I mean do I live in the positive world I'm the worst cusser on the planet <laughs> me talk all day I'm cussing left and right I just think that's passion and that's the way I, I articulate my passion um and uh if you're not passionate then in what you're doing then you've got to just like jump you got to jump into what you want to do otherwise you're just going to keep thinking and talking about it but you're not going to bring it to fruition mm. oh, I love it yeah I can really <laughs> listen to you all the time you're the best so inspiring I love you. So much, Janice. I love you Thank too. You. It's been so fun. Have a, have a beautiful night. You as well.